Today, let's talk about all of the story plot points in Act 1, so that you can actually follow step-by-step step the three-act structure when writing a story. In the last video, I explained how the character's intention changes with each act. So, Act 1, the character's intention will be one way. Act 2, the character's intention will be another way. And Act 3, the character will have another intention. And every time the act changes, the character's intention changes in the story, right? Uh, and then the story changes because what they do changes. So, let's focus on writing the first act in the story. Step by step. In Act 1, the main character's intention is to stay within the norm. Uh, to put it differently, in Act 1, the main character's intention is to actively resist any call to action which will bring change uh, in the story and in their life. And if they would like change, they don't do anything about it. There are two things that uh, they are resisting. They are resisting to either go after what they want. In other words, at the start of the story, they're not going after what they want, even though they want it. The other thing that they could be resisting is to face an ongoing problem. In other words, at the start of the story, they are actively trying to ignore a problem that won't go away on its own. Something is causing misery or limitations in their life and they're not doing anything about it for their own reasons. Uh, in Act 1, we see how they convince themselves and others that they should stay put. Why they shouldn't go after what they want, why they shouldn't face the nagging problem that won't go away. It's a step-by-step -step writing process that you can follow. So, the first half of Act 1, we introduce everything. At the start of every story, we have things to introduce to the audience. Who is the character? What do they do? Where are they? What do they want? What's the problem? You have to tell the audience uh, what they're going to read, what the audience are going to read or watch. And you have to do it skillfully, but you have to do it. And this is the setup. But again, we're going to redefine it so that you can follow the steps on how to do that, how to set it up. So step one, think about what is the norm for your character? Where are they usually? What is their environment? What do they do? Who do they know? What is their purpose if they have one? Because at the start of any story, we have to introduce what life is like for them now, whether it's normal, bland, or absolutely crazy. Whether they, whether they like their life or dislike it, or don't really care. We simply just want to introduce these things because these are the things that are going to change. So I'm going to give you a story example as I walk through the steps over the next three videos over each act. I'll keep coming back to this story. I'll start with my idea as you all will, as everyone will, and then I'll follow the steps. This will be a simple story, but a simple story demonstrates the methods in the clearest way. So my idea, and I'm thinking of this as I go, my idea is a squirrel who lives in a tree. Very simple. You don't need a complicated idea to write a full story, just follow the plot points and the story will form as you go. So I think about the norm for my character. What is their environment? Uh, who are they? What is life like for them now? Is it normal, bland or crazy? And most importantly, what is their purpose? If they have one, what do they do every day? Well, every day at the top of a tree, a squirrel wakes up, climbs out of his hole, runs down the tree and scavenges for nuts for winter. Just a normal day every day. Now, step two. We think about what is a nagging problem that just won't go away. Or think about something that they really, really, really want, but just can't get and that they're miserable without. They say to themselves, one day I'll get it. One day I'll face a problem. One day I'll go after it, but not now. One day. 
even if those things exist, something they want or a nagging problem keeps coming back and won't go away um, and is getting worse, they will not yet be trying to figure out how to get what they want, or they will not yet be trying to figure out how to overcome this nagging problem at this point in the story. They're just not going to be doing anything about it. Or someone else can deal with it. But right now, everything is okay. That is the state that they are in. And this moves on to step three. But first, a story example. Now I think about the nagging problem that just won't go away or something that they want that he can't have. Or both. All right, a nagging problem is getting worse every day. The squirrel runs around the park scavenging for nuts. But every day, he finds less and less nuts. When it carries on like this, if it carries on like this, there's not going to be any nuts left for winter. And he'll starve. Step three. Now we're going to introduce their intention, which will last until the end of Act 1. Remember, we're only on the first half of Act 1. Their intention, which has always been their intention from this point, before this point, and until the end of Act 1. Their intention currently is to resist any call to action that pushes them to go and get what they want, or to resist any call to action that pushes them to face this problem that keeps coming back and is getting worse. Your character will have reasons for why they won't go after what they want or face the opposition. It's usually because it's going to be a challenge and they don't think that they can deal with it or they don't want to. I need to think of reasons why they won't pursue or take action. Um, so think of some things that are keeping them from going after these things. Pretend you are your character now and tell yourself this. I can't go after what I want because, for example, my parents are stopping me. The character's parents. Um, someone won't allow me to. Or I don't have the money. Or it's too difficult. Or it's too dangerous. Or I don't have the skills to do it. Or I don't know how. I don't have someone else to help me. Or even because I'll probably just fail. I won't be able to do it. It's too hard. Uh, and that is what we introduce to the audience, this reasoning. And we show them that reasoning as to why they're not doing anything about it. Or pretend that you are your, 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 your character and tell yourself this, I can't face the problem yet because, and it could be for the same reasons, my parents are stopping me or someone won't allow me to, or I don't have the money, it's too difficult or dangerous to face these problems, or I don't have the skills to face the problem, uh, or I don't have someone else to help me or, you know, or because I'll just fail. It's too hard or I don't want to. And then you just show that reasoning why they won't go after what they want or why they won't face the problem that's getting worse. So if they have a controlling parents that stop them, then you show them, you show the audience those parents and the confrontations that they have. Then if they don't have the money, then you show them that they haven't got much money and that they're struggling to buy stuff, you know, and what they would have to spend if they tried to do something about it. If it's going to be too dangerous, then you show what the danger looks like out there in the wild or something. You show how dangerous it really could be if they did go and do something. Uh, and that is their reasoning. So, for example, in the story, introduce their intention to resist doing something about it their reasoning for doing nothing about it. That uh, night, an owl visits the squirrel and says, why won't you go and find where all the nuts are? Surely someone is coming into your park and taking them. The squirrel says, I only know my tree and this park. I can't go beyond the park barrier. I don't know what's out there. It's too dangerous. Maybe another way, uh, the squirrel is scavenging for nuts and approaches the edge of the park fence and looks out into the foresty abyss. Thorns, brambles, strange creatures emerging from the, shad uh, from the shadows. The squirrel sees this. What would happen to the squirrel if he stepped beyond the park barrier? Who knows what strange creature 
would eat him up alive. Would he get lost, maybe? Um, so, in the first half of Act 1, we've introduced what normal life is like, whether it's normal, boring or crazy. We've introduced their problem, or what they need or want. And we've introduced the reasons for why they aren't going after it, or why they're not doing anything about it, why they're not dealing with the problem. Now we're going into the second half of Act 1, where we begin to push your character. We begin to push them to do those things. Now the problem is going to be, it's going to start getting worse. It's going to become uncontrollable. And now they're going to really, 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 really need what they want, or else they're miserable. They're just getting more and more and more miserable without having it. Now it's going to become harder and harder to resist going after what they want to face the problem. And the reasons that they had for not doing anything about it are going to be less legitimate because now, now they need to do something about it because you're pushing them to do something about it. So step one of the second half of Act One, a call to action. If you've decided that it is a problem that they have not been facing, that they, they don't want to face, you're going to make it very, very, very difficult to ignore that problem. The problem either reaches a climax and they have to do something about it now, or they realize that if they don't do something about it, it will later reach a climax. It will start snowballing and everything will come tumbling down. So they have to do something now before that happens. Find a way to make the problem that keeps coming back, find a way to make it come back one more time and ruin everything unless they find a way to stop it. If you've decided that it's something that they want or need, that they are not pursuing, now you're going to give them every reason to go after it. They're going to become more and more miserable without it. In other words, this call to action is a choice that is presented to your character. Do nothing and everything comes tumbling down and be miserable forever or worse. Or do something now, regardless of the reasons why you didn't want to. The point of this step is to pressure the character into not being able to ignore the problem or to not be able to resist after go, uh, you know, going after what they want. So for a story example, the problem now reaches a, a climax if they do nothing and they'll be screwed. One day, the squirrel wakes up one bright sunny morning, scuttles down the tree into his park on the hunt for some nuts. He comes back later with nothing. Not a single nut. Someone has taken them all. I will starve this winter unless I find the thief who is taking my nuts. Step two of the second half of Act One. Contemplation. Now we are going to have to think of reasons why they should go uh, versus why they shouldn't. They are going to be thinking of these reasons. You're going to be showing them thinking. They're going to be looking for possible ways that they could theoretically, you know, go after what they want or to face a problem. Just planning in the back of their mind. They're not doing anything yet. They haven't taken action. Maybe just contemplating in the back of their mind if they could. They may be speaking with other characters as to what they could do, if it's worth it, if they should. The characters might be giving them advice or warnings about what to do if they should or shouldn't do it. They shouldn't do something about it or should. Um, you know, they, they contemplate what would happen if they didn't or did go after what they want or face a problem. They're just considering it. That's all. They are seeking reasons why they should and shouldn't go uh, and do something about it and how they could do it. They, they might be experimenting. What if I did do something about it? Could I? What, would this work? Would that work? Show the character contemplating possible options they could take to deal with a problem or go after what they want. How would they do it? Show the character thinking of what they could do and how they could do it. Uh, and even if it's possible.
So, as a story example, they're not sure if they should or shouldn't do something about the problem. Uh, the squirrel doesn't even know who is taking the nuts. So one night, as it gets dark, it scuttles down the tree and gently places one of the nuts that he's collected in the past. He places it gently on the floor and he waits. If this is gone by the morning, I will know for sure that someone is stealing my food. The next morning he wakes up and it's gone. Those thieves. Later that night, the owl returns and asks once again, why won't you go and find where all the nuts are? Surely someone is coming into your park and taking them. The squirrel asks the owl, but if I leave the park, surely I will be eaten by the strange creatures, or surely I will get lost or fall into a river. Surely I would die. And the owl says, if you do nothing, by winter, you will starve and die anyway. Now, there are actually more cons for doing nothing than something. And the character is realizing this. It's better to try and fail than to not try at all. It's got to that point. Remember, I'm writing the story off the top of my head, um, mostly. I don't really know where this is going. I'm just following the plot points. Step three, take action, which leads to a change of intention. Now they make their decision. Now they decide to face the problem or to go after what they want. It is the realization that they have, that they, they come to that this is the only way. And if they don't, uh, if they do, if they, if they go after it and they're successful, everything will go back to normal. Um, by this point, they will no longer be able to resist a call to action uh, to chase a desire or face an increasing problem. Their intentions will change because now they intend to take action against the, something that has been pushing and poking at them. All throughout Act 1, um, now this problem is too big to ignore. Um, well, they really, really, really want what they want because now they're just miserable. So, uh, with this decision to pursue what they want or to face a problem, they set off on their journey and they begin to take action towards it. And that is the end of Act 1 because now their intention has changed. So, as a story example, uh, the decision that they make, which is the change of intention, and now they start to try. Now the squirrel decides that he will leave the park into the foresty abyss to find the thief who is taking his nuts so he will not starve. He packs a few nuts for his journey um, and he sets another nut down on the floor in the evening by the tree and he waits for the thief to come and take it. Night arrives and the squirrel hears something rustling, a figure emerges from the edge of the park barrier. It sneaks up to the tree, opens its bag and steals the nuts. It must have been waiting, watching the squirrel. The squirrel follows him up until the edge and then the squirrel enters the dark foresty abyss. Now we've set up the story and this is where the story begins. So, as a summary of Act 1, the second half of Act 1. In the second half of Act 1, we've given them a call to action by making the problem impossible to ignore as it gets worse and worse. Or uh, we've made them even more miserable by not having what they want and they must get it. We've showed them start to contemplate doing something about it. How possible will it be experimenting, getting advice from other characters, um, testing if they should or shouldn't, if it's possible, where they should go. And now they've made their decision, they've changed their intention, and now they start to take action. And with this change of intention, now we're going into Act 2, where they have a new intention, which is to go after what they want or to face the problem to pursue these things. Act two is where the journey really begins with growth and discovery. And by the end of act two, 
is where everything changes. So keep an eye out for the next episode on how to write a story by following the three act structure step by step. I'm Joe Webb, a storyteller. Learn to write fiction properly. <laughs>